Hello, everyone. Welcome to Creative Biolabs. Creative Biolabs is a CRO company committed to promoting basic research and pharmaceutical development with our expertise. Today we are going to introduce immune cell migration in cancer and immunotherapy. There are three segments of this video. First, an introduction to immune cell migration, including the immune contexture in cancer, overview of immune cell migration, organ-specific area codes for immune cell migration, four classes of leukocyte homing receptors, and molecular mechanisms of leukocyte extravasation. Then, immunotherapies targeting leukocyte migration, covering the current knowledge and open questions, and three categories of immunotherapies that target the migration of immune cells, namely, immunotherapy by ex vivo modification of immune migration, immunotherapy at the tumor site to enhance immune cell migration, and systemic application of drugs and biologicals. Last, but not the least, conclusions and perspectives. An Introduction to Immune Cell Migration before jumping into how immune cell migration can be targeted by immunotherapy, let's talk about the immune contexture in cancer. As we know, immune cells, such as T and B lymphocytes, natural killer cells, macrophages, and dendritic cells, are found in the microenvironment of solid tumors. The nature, location, and functionality of tumor infiltrating leukocytes are referred to as immune contexture. Immune cells can be either anti or protumorigenic. For example, CD8-positive T lymphocytes and NK cells have the capacity to recognize and eliminate tumor cells, while T-regulatory cells and M2 macrophages can exert protumor, immunosuppressive effects within the microenvironment. Ultimately, disease outcome is determined by the complex interplay between tumor cells, tissue cells, soluble factors within the microenvironment, and the presence of pro- and anti-tumor components of the immune system. By modulating the migratory behavior of pro- and anti-tumor immune cells, immunotherapy can be developed to target cancer by shifting this balance in favor of the host immune system. Over the decades, our understanding of the migration of many types of immune cells has expanded exponentially. Most immune cells originate from hematopoietic stem cells in the bone marrow. The first phase of migration in the lifetime of an immune cell occurs following their development, upon which cells leave the bone marrow and enter the blood or lymphatic circulation. T lymphocytes are the exception to this rule, since they migrate initially to the thymus for completion of the development process, before entering into the circulation. Following development, the migratory behavior of different immune cell populations varies according to their function. Dendritic cells and macrophages, for example, provide frontline defense against infection and therefore migrate directly into peripheral tissues, where they patrol in search of invading pathogens. Naive B and T lymphocytes, in contrast, circulate between secondary lymphatic organs and blood. This is because proper activation of the adaptive immune system requires interaction with other immune cell populations, a process that occurs most efficiently when the relevant cell types and cytokines are concentrated within specialized regions of a lymph node. In the case of B cells, antigen recognition is followed by interaction with CD4-positive T cells and subsequent differentiation within the lymph node. In the case of T-cells, antigen recognition with appropriate costumulation is mediated by professional antigen-presenting cells, such as dendritic cells, upon arrival in tissue-draining lymph nodes following activation in peripheral tissues. Finally, activated T and B lymphocytes migrate out of the lymphatic system and into sites of inflammation in peripheral tissues, where they are poised to exert effector functions on the front line. The complex movements and interactions of leukocytes throughout the organs of the body require exquisite regulation. Since tissue compartments are divided by epithelial and endothelial barriers which restrict immune cell migration, lock and key system is required for the migration of immune cells between these barriers, where homing receptors are the keys to unlocking the corresponding locks. Distinct patterns of homing receptor expression are required for entering into each tissue. These expression profiles are collectively described by the hypothesis of organ-specific area codes. Here are examples. Leukocyte migration to lymph node, gut, or skin requires strikingly different patterns of homing receptor expression. Skin tropism is typically conferred by E and P-selectin ligands, CCR4, and or CCR10. Gut homing, in contrast, requires A4B7 integrin and CCR9. 
Limp tropism is conferred by L-selectin and CCR7. These organ-specific area codes, combined with inflammation-induced expression of corresponding endothelial ligands, allow fine-tuning of leukocyte distribution. The vast majority of leukocyte homing receptors belong to one of four classes, the selectin, selectin ligand, integrin, and G-protein coupled receptor families. Members of each family play distinct roles in the cascade of events that occurring when leukocytes migrate from one tissue compartment to another. The selectins bind weakly to a variety of glycoprotein ligands on the surface of other cells. L-selectin is expressed on the surface of lymphocytes. E and P-selectin are expressed by peripheral tissue endothelium. Leukocytes may express ligands for E and P-selectin that facilitate weak adhesion to peripheral endothelium. The short-lived interactions between selectins and their ligands lead to rolling of leukocytes along endothelial cell beds. Chemokine receptors chemoattractant ligands, chemokines, are secreted and displayed on the surface of tissue cells in order to guide migration during homeostasis or in response to inflammatory stimuli. Integrins are a family of 24 heterodimers that mediate firm adhesion of leukocytes to both endothelial cells and components of the extracellular matrix. This picture shows the molecular mechanisms of leukocyte extravasation. The initial tethering of leukocytes to the vascular endothelium is mediated by low affinity selectin binding. Leukocyte then rolling on the endothelial cell surface allows the binding of chemokine receptors to chemokines. Finally, firm adhesion of leukocytes to the endothelial bed is mediated by integrins. Firm adhesion allows for leukocyte diapodesis into the interstitial space. There is a growing appreciation that immune contexture has a significant impact on the clinical outcome of cancer patients. Thus, immunotherapies targeting immune cell migration can be developed to modulate the immune contexture in tumor microenvironment. The primary objective of most immunotherapeutic strategies, such as adoptive cell transfer and cancer vaccines, is to efficiently induce and activate anti-tumor immune cells such as dendritic cells, NK cells, and T lymphocytes. In many cases these approaches successfully amplify tumor immune responses in patients, yet long-lasting clinical benefit or complete responses are reported in only a minority of cases. One potential explanation for this discrepancy is that, despite stimuli that boost the immune response, immune cells do not efficiently interact with one another or do not migrate to and accumulate within the tumor mass. Novel approaches to immunotherapy that overcome such immune migratory limitations are urgently needed, and this has become an area of intensive research over the decades. Immunotherapies that target the migration of immune cells can be broadly divided into the following three categories. Ex vivo modification of immune cells, delivery of homing stimuli directly to the tumor microenvironment, and systemic application of drugs and biologicals. Immune migratory properties can be modified by various means, such as cytokine treatment and viral transduction. The latter involves the use of engineered viruses that infect and integrate in the immune cell genome, forcing the expression of selected genes, such as chemokine receptors. Here shows the two principal branches of adoptive cell transfer immunotherapy, ex vivo genetic modification of blood-derived lymphocytes, and selection and expansion of tumor-derived lymphocytes. In both cases, rain fusion of ex vivo modified cells may lead to enhanced anti-tumor immunity. Besides the direct modification of immune cells, recent research has also focused on the delivery of immune migratory stimuli to the tumor site, an alternative means to the similar end. There are multiple means to deliver chemoattractants to the tumor site, including intratumoral injection, in vivo transfection and transduction of tumor cells, and locally applied oncolytic viruses. Each means has its own advantages and limitations. For example, a potential limitation of the intratumoral injection and in vivo transfection and transduction is that immune effector cells are only recruited to lesions that are directly targeted by injection, leaving metastases in other organs or less accessible locations untreated. The gene delivery approach by oncolytic virus, on the other hand, is concerned with off-target infection. In addition to those two strategies already discussed, there are numerous means by which immune cell migration can be altered using drugs and biologicals applied systemically. 
Numerous studies have reported effects on T-cell migratory behavior induced by therapeutics that were not originally designed for this objective. This includes both immunotherapeutic agents and standard chemotherapies. For example, CTLA-4 is a T-cell inhibitory receptor located on the T-cell surface and competing with the CD28 receptor to bind CD80 or CD86, thereby blocking T-cell activation. Monoclonal antibodies against CTLA-4, such as ipilimumab, prevent inhibitory receptor engagement and promote T-cell activation. Scientists found that chronic systemic treatment with anti-CTLA-4 antibodies led to increased mobility of intertumoral T-cells. Creative Biolabs offers immunotherapy preclinical development services, including gamma-delta T-cell therapy development and immune checkpoint development. With a team of experienced scientists, we also provide the best strategies and protocols for T-cell services, including T-cell isolation, T-cell activation and expansion, T-cell characterization, T-cell production, T-cell cytotoxicity test and T-cell migration assay. Please don't hesitate to contact us if you have any questions.